Are you interested in human rights, equity, social justice, and global health governance? Well then, believe it or not, you're interested in global health law. In this episode, I interview Lawrence Gostin. He's the author of the new book, Global Health Law. During the interview, Larry tells us about his book, and he also gives some advice for people that are wanting to work in the global health space. So if you're interested, stay tuned, you've come to the right place. Hi, my name is Greg Martin. This is the Global Health YouTube channel. On this channel, we've got content on things like epidemiology, ethics in the global health space. We've got content on getting a job in global health and interviews with experts. Subscribe if you haven't, and you'll get an email alert whenever there's a new video posted. Okay, let's get stuck into the interview. Thanks very much, Larry, for being with us today and for uh, helping us understand the area of international law and how it applies to the world of public health a little bit better. I wonder, just to start off with, I wonder if you could just tell us briefly a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do in the global health space, particularly as it, as it uh, relates to international law. I'm the university professor uh, at the Georgetown University and the uh, O'Neill Chair in Global Health Law. At the university, I, I, I'm also the director of the World Health Organization Collaborating Center on Public Health Law and Human Rights. Uh, and I work a lot with academics, civil society, UN agencies uh, in, you know, working to really improve health around the world and to reduce uh, health disparities among the rich and the poor. Larry, now uh, of particular interest is the fact that you've recently published a new book and I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about the book and give us a, a glimpse of what it is that we may get from it if, if, uh, if, we, if we were to read it. The book is uh, called Global Health Law uh, and it's just been published by Harvard University Press. Um, it's available on uh, uh, Amazon and uh, all uh, most uh, online quality booksellers and of course through Harvard University Press and uh, I think it's the first and the only uh, discussion of how international law, human rights and global governance can markedly improve health outcomes with particular, particular attention to global health and justice. Could you perhaps tell us what is international law? It, 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 to me, it seems clearly that it's something different from the law that you would find within a nation state, which you know, which would be ratified by the national legislature. How does international law work, and how is it enforced, and how do these international laws even come come about? I, I'm happy to answer that question, but it's actually not a tantalizing answer. It's a very technical legal answer, but basically, uh, you've got law that uh, that individual countries or states uh, develop themselves through their national legislatures. Um, but then there are international treaties um, like the Climate Change Treaty or the World Trade Organization treaties. Um, and there are very important global health treaties like uh, the WHO's Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, um, and uh, the international health regulations also from the World Health Organization. One particular form of international law as a major driver of change, and that is the human right to health, which is uh, a part of international law. And then we need to try to harness the power of other international regimes to make them work in favor of rather than against health, like climate change, trade, refugees, food, uh, and many other international regimes that we really need to harness for the power of global health justice. Right now, you know, trade, intellectual property, even food and other regimes uh, tend to either ignore health or they act against health, and we've got to change that. What is a human right? Uh, and, and perhaps how are human rights enshrined in international law? A human right is a right that every person is entitled to, um, not because they have some particular status or, or finances or eligibility, but simply by the fact that we're human beings, we have inalienable rights. Now. The human rights framework doesn't have the same enforceability 
as, say, the World Trade Organization, but I argue that it should. Um, and I'm part of a movement for an international um, treaty called the Framework Convention on Global Health, which places the right to health in ways that are enforceable, accountable. Uh, and uh, Ban Ki-moon, the General Secretary of the UN, has endorsed it. Michelle Sidibe, the head of UNAIDS, has endorsed it. And the book argues strongly that we need to really make the right to health enforceable and hold countries to account for the health of the citizens. Okay, that sounds tremendously interesting. Um, Larry, I wonder if you could perhaps just talk to us a little bit about how human rights, uh, and particularly as they pertain to, to, to health, how that may help address the problem of health inequalities that we see in the world today? Well, one of the fundamental um, uh, ideals behind human rights is, is that all people are equal. All people are equal in value. Um, and there are many human rights that, that require non-discriminatory treatment. Um, and justice is a very important concept in human rights. And so what I believe that human rights demand are two things. Uh, one is, is that everybody in society gets the benefit of, of uh, improved health and improved life and longevity. Um, but more than that, that we need to pay particular attention um, to questions of social justice to the vulnerable, the disabled, the poor. Um, this is what human rights demands in my view, and this is something that um, I think the right to health should ensure. Okay, tremendously interesting. And perhaps Larry, just as a, a final question, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit about how you got into public health, what it is that uh, brought you into this world of global health and public health. Well, I mean, I once wrote a little autobiography call, called from a, sanit from a Civil Libertarian to a Sanitarian, and it just takes you through the evolution of my life and career from uh, at one time the head of uh, what's now called Liberty in the United Kingdom, uh, which is a major civil liberties organization. Um, and now I believe in... Uh, not, I, I still believe in individual civil liberties, but I've also moved on because I believe we've neglected the common good um, and the health of the whole population. Um, I can send you a link to that uh, article and also a link to the book that you might want to put up on the screen um, for viewers. Um, but essentially, you know, what I've realized is, is that individual rights are extremely important but we are, we're not all just individuals. We're, we are embedded in families, communities, societies, whole nations, and actually a global community. And what we need to do is to, to, to treat our policies not as individualistic policies, but policies that really understand um, that we are very socially embedded uh, and we have to really pay a lot of attention to collective goods and common goods. And first and foremost among these common goods is to have a healthy, vibrant population. Larry, I wonder if you have got any little piece of advice for young people that are interested in getting involved in global public health. Um, I wonder if you can just speak to them and say, this is the kind of skill set that you think they should focus on or things that you see missing in the global health space where there's a need and a young person that's just getting into the global health space now may be able to focus their attention on something like that. Well, I have two sons that I, I guide and I also have lots of students and the advice that I give them is first, follow your passion. Do what really animates your life in your life. Um, but do it in a way that um, is for the good of others. In other words, devote yourself to others, and if you devote yourself to others, either in your local communities, your countries, or your world, um, and you do it in a way that is passionate for you, 
not only will you help others, but you will help yourself and lead a fulfilling life. And you can get any kind of a credential. Um, it doesn't matter as long as you harness it for good. You can be an engineer, you can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, you can be a human rights a advocate, you can be um, a, a part of an NGO. Um, so it is important to develop a skill um, and it's important to develop but and to focus on that skill and then to use that skill um, for the benefit of those around you. Um, but there's no cookie cutter. There is no one way of doing it. Um, I chose the root of, of law and human rights. Um, but you might be an engineer and create a new toilet um, that's flushable without water to help the developing world. Or you might be a nutritionist and help, um, uh, help feed the world. Or you might be an economist and figure out ways to distribute uh, uh, wealth more fairly around the world and around countries. These are all very critical um, parts of who we are. Thanks very much, Larry. And we've put a link to both the articles that you described and to a, your book, so people can go to, straight to Amazon or different places and they can buy your book. We're gonna, we've put that link below this video in the description here on YouTube. Um, I'd just like to say once again, Larry, thanks very much for, for joining us. Thanks for your time. We really appreciate it. As always, everything that you've said has been tremendously inspirational, and I'm sure everybody watching this uh, has been tremendously appreciative of your time. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. I'd love to hear your thoughts, suggestions, ideas, pontifications, and comments, so please write them in the comment section below. I'd also like to get some feedback and suggestions from you as to what content you'd like to see on the YouTube channel in the future. So let me know what you'd like to see, and I'll make it. Until next time, don't do drugs, always do your best, don't ever change, and I'll see you soon. Take care.